Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with my good friend, Pankaj Patra. He's the SVP and CIO of Brinkers International. Pankaj, would you mind uh, introducing yourself, please, and telling us a little bit about your roles and responsibilities? Yeah, thank you so much, Tim, for giving me the opportunity. So my name is Pankaj Patra. I'm the Chief Information Officer for Brinker International. We have uh, close to 1,600 restaurants uh, all over the world, primarily in U.S., corporate-owned, uh, and we manage two brands, Chili's and Mojano's, which are brick and mortar, and then we have two virtual brands, uh, It's Just Wings, and Mojano's Italian Classic. Uh, I've been with the company for uh, this go-round uh, for close to 10 years now, uh, and in the role for last uh, three years. Pankaj, would you mind sharing a little bit about your journey into the role of the CIO? What were some of the key milestones that prepared you for this role? Yeah, Tim, that's a great question. I have been a technologist at heart. So I started my career in 99, uh, working on Sybase and uh, uh, Excel spreadsheets and all those things. So I always lo loved working on technology. And as I continued working uh, on technology, I started managing different aspects of the business, uh, whether it is managing a team uh, within a bigger project, managing a bigger project. It just gave me and an avenue to learn more and more about uh, not just the technology side, but also the business side. Um, and um, I have been doing that for last 10, 15 years. Um, and it helped me at least uh, get to a point where I feel comfortable to uh, lead all aspects of uh, a IT department. It may not seem like that, but it is very complex in terms of like all the different uh, groups which are there within IT uh, and how it works and how it comes together. And uh, I just had the privilege of doing all of those at some point in my career, which prepared me to then take over uh, as the chief information officer for Brinker. Um, and I would also add, apart from that, uh, one of the big thing for me has been uh, understanding the business uh, which I am in, uh, because technology for the sake of technology won't uh, cut it, right? Like a lot of people know um, how to manage technology, but why are we working on certain things? How does it impact the business? Uh, how does, in my case, uh, in restaurants, how does it impact my team members uh, and uh, how do guests perceive? Like just having that mindset working with the business um, did help me also immensely to be a true business partner as I took on the chief information officer role. Wow, you've covered quite a bit of ground there. Thank you for that. When you think about working with your business uh, partners, uh, some of the challenges that we often have is that many of them don't have as deep a technical background, and it can be quite challenging to to talk about deeply technical initiatives with non-technical business executives. How do you navigate that? Again, a great question, Tim. Um, um, I don't like usually when I start a conversation or have a meeting, I don't start it uh, with technology. At the end of the day, uh, I'm my goal is to be able to solve a business uh, problem or work on a business strategy, uh, and that's where the conversation starts. Um, technology is an enabler, and I think by now everybody knows the role technology plays uh, with any system, any solution, any process. Um, so I honestly, like, I didn't have a big challenge in explaining uh, what technology can do, but my role has been uh, is to collaborate with them, understand the business challenge we are trying to solve, uh, and then come back to the, my team and think about like business processes, uh, technology solves and all those things. So the success in my case has been like, don't talk to them about technology, right? They, they are already well aware of it, what they are trying to get from you is to be able to say like, hey, I can understand what you're trying to solve and I can uh, come back with a solve which is uh, optimized through use of technology. And I think that has been a big uh, tool, tool for me to be able to uh, take it to some of these conversations. Oh, that's true. I mean, if you, you focus on the business problem and the business challenge, I mean, that is something that's common for both groups. So there, that makes it uh, at least a, a common starting point. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about your team? What, how are you set up and kind of uh, how are you structured and how do you work with your team? 
Yeah, so um, uh, I have a team of uh, uh, close to uh, 100 people uh, working for me. Um, and uh, the way the team is structured is very much aligned with the business. So I did uh, do a reorg when I uh, took over the role of chief information officer and aligned the whole group with business. So, and um, if you think about, so since I'm from a consulting background, I had uh, to bring some consulting knowledge into this, right? So I divided the team into verticals and horizontals, as we call in the consulting world. But my first one was operational stability. So anything and everything we put in the restaurant or put it in the hand of our team members, were both at home office as well as restaurants, we need to make sure that it works. It works in a way where it doesn't become a hindrance to them, but it's more about uh, how does it enable them to do their job. So our first focus was operational stability and um, our uh, commitment to our business partners was that we are not going to do anything else unless we are able to stabilize the systems we have in our restaurants and home office. So that's, I had a leader lead that. The second one was team member experience. So before I can change my guest experience, I have to have somebody uh, who can, or I have to have systems which is going to change my team members' experience, right? I have 50, uh, 6,000 or close to 60,000 now team members who are working in our restaurants on a daily basis and another 500 to 600 team members who are working in home office. I need to be able to give them an experience which they will be uh, proud of and uh, want to use. And if I'm able to change their experience, I'm pretty sure they are going to uh, change the experience of the guests who are wall walking into our mm -hmm. restaurant. So I have a leader who manages everything from a team member experience perspective. Then it's the guest experience. So we have a leader who manages all uh, guest touch points. And uh, the idea is that uh, anything and everything which goes uh, or is being uh, used by our guests um, has the same look and feel kind of same kind of experience, right? Make it easy for them, make it convenient for them. Uh, there should not be any friction point. So there is a team leader who manages that. And then uh, we have innovation and infrastructure. Uh, so, and it goes in that order, uh, Tim, to think about. So we are not going to do anything on um, team member experience unless we have operational stability. We are not going to do anything on the guest side unless I have my team member experience uh, buttoned up. And we are not going to innovate unless my guest, ex the systems and the processes we have today works. Um, and then we have supporting functions where it's like data and reporting, which uh, supports all the verticals. We have cybersecurity, which supports all the vertical. We have shared services like uh, vendor management, uh, PMO, franchisee, which uh, supports all this. So that's how my team is structured, but it is very much aligned where um, like I can take each of my leader and have them work with a key stakeholder within my business community and they can align uh, with them. So that's how I've structured my team and it has been working well for me. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. Operational stability, employee experience, then customer experience, and then, then innovation at the, at the tail end there too as well. That uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. And then, and to have that kind of alignment structure, uh, organizational structure alignment then with your business partners, uh, makes it easy for them to know uh, who to and and nurture the relationships. Um, mm -hmm. You know, much has also been said about the the people skills uh, needed for those uh, in, in IT. I was wondering if you could maybe offer some commentary on that. Uh, how have you grown as a leader, uh, and particularly as it relates to the the people side? Yeah. So, one thing which uh, uh, I have learned over the last uh, several years being in the industry, at the end of the day. Um, I, like from if I look at it from a technology perspective, um, um, I can teach anybody technology, but I need to have the drive, the passion, the loyalty, uh, which um, which I can only bring to the table if I take care of my team members. Um, this is one of the uh, feedback I usually give when I uh, attend a conference or speaking in a conference is that if you look at my leadership team, combined they have 20 uh, years of technology experience uh, but uh, from a loyalty, from a attitude to make a difference from a experience perspective, um, they have 200 years of experience, right? I can always teach them technology, but what I cannot teach them is the loyalty. What I cannot teach them is the passion to make a difference, uh, the attitude to make a difference, right? Like that's what is very near and dear to me. And that's what I look at when uh, I look at my 
uh, team members. And uh, honestly, like for me, I have grown the same way. Uh, for me, mm-hmm. uh, I can I can be a great technologist, but if I don't understand uh, the people side of it, I don't understand my customer needs. Um, it it's not going to uh, click. It's not going to work. Um, and that's where I've been focusing on. Um, again, from my team perspective, uh, I make sure that uh, I take care of the team members. I have um, understand what they need, what drives them, um, and talk to them and work with them uh, in a way where they feel they are a part of a bigger uh, goal. They are part of a uh, North Star, which all of us are trying to get to. Uh, If I'm not able to instill that, if I'm not able to motivate in that way, uh, it's going to be really difficult for them to uh, work for an organization where they don't know where we are going. They don't know what the end goal is. So that's what i've been preaching and practicing for a long time Tim. very interesting so you're hiring for drive for loyalty and for passion and then you're, you're going to teach them the technology how do you right. find that how do you know that up front when you're interviewing somebody or you're considering a candidate yeah and it's um it's a hit and miss and um, and but we do a really good job so even for like somebody who is coming on to the technology side always doesn't get interviewed by folks from my team or my department i uh, i put them in front of the business i put them in front of our uh, culture group uh, who uh, who are good at asking those questions who are able to uh, understand that uh, side of the individual or a leader who we are interviewing um and sometimes again like we have our own challenges but uh, it's you will be able to uh, figure that out pretty quickly. Um, and mm. again, uh, at the end of the day, uh, take them out for dinner, ask, ask them about their family, <laughs> ask them about their hobbies are, like see if they are able to uh, give you some of the insights, like take them into a, uh, on an environment where they don't feel uh, pressurized that it's an interview, I need to get every answer which the person is asking correctly, right? Give them that mm. environment where they are open, like. Um, so all those helps um, and gets you to know somebody uh, at a level where um, it's different than you would have got in a structured environment, right? So, uh, and we have been having success on that. We have our own challenges and uh, it's not like a foolproof, uh, but uh, we have been following it and uh, it's working for us. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, everything starts with the people, starts with the employees, starts with the customers. If I could shift our conversation a little bit and talk a little bit about the the restaurant technology stack, could you provide some uh, guidance and structure on how to think about the technology stack that's currently in play uh, for or how it's changed uh, for the restaurant industry? Yeah, so I think um, what I can I can say, Tim, like. Uh, uh, so you'll have different uh, groups uh, who are going to uh, be doing it differently. So for me, like I have a team which I can leverage to uh, put an architecture which is going to work for us. And uh, I'm fully aware that every, especially in the restaurant space, everybody may not have a team of the same size to be able to do some of the things. So I'll break it up into two areas. Uh, one where it's a team where um, departments have a team which can uh, put this structure together, right? So we have been working on uh, a um, common framework, common architecture, which is going to help us um, be more nimble to the restaurant uh, needs. What I mean by that uh, is essentially like putting a foundation together, right? Pouring the foundation so that we can then build a house which we know is going to be able to withstand uh, the pressures which are there from outside. Um, and while it takes time, uh, it's there is no way out of it. So we have been working on uh, this for last four or five years in a different uh, in different setting, but we have been putting an architecture where like we have a common hub or common framework which helps us integrate easily with any other third party because we are not uh, in the business of building software, but at the end of the day, my goal or my charter is to be able to uh, implement solution which is going to work for our restaurants. And 
if I don't have something which I can get from the marketplace, then we have to go and build it. Mm -hmm. uh, so whether we build it or whether we integrate it, that this common framework helps us uh, be very nimble, also helps us uh, to adhere to the framework so that uh, when uh, we know what kind of data we are getting from the system, what kind of uh, security protocols we have to follow, what kind of integrations we have to build. I don't have to cater to multiple different ways of doing it. I just have to adhere to the framework and have a team which can do that. And I know that if they follow that, it's going to be uh, secure. It, it's going to provide me the same kind of data and all those things. And And that has helped us tremendously uh, during the COVID time to implement some of the new things mm -hmm. or helping us on a daily basis to improve our capability to deliver to the business needs. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is for players or uh, groups who don't have a big uh, department uh, to be able to implement some of these things. I think the biggest thing is uh, challenging the partners who play in that space, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, um, you have multiple solutions which are out there. When you go to a trade show, you look at like how many of them have a table management system, how many of them are coming with a new POS, how many of them are coming with a new online ordering. Uh, and and all of them work for the purpose uh, they are built for. Can they work in the restaurant without impacting the stability of the restaurants? Because at the end of the day, the operators are there to run the restaurant, not be your tech person, right? They are not your help desk. Uh, they are there to be able to take care of the guests not uh, train them on how to use systems. Um, so all those things we have to keep in mind. So challenging our partners who provide solutions to be able to think in that way so that at the end of the day, they are providing something which is going to work for uh, people in the uh, who are not able to build some of these architecture. And it's not difficult. I think it's a mindset change rather than uh, uh, anything else because once we, once people start thinking about it, once partners start thinking about it, it's a much easier uh, uh, challenge than what it may look like from outside. So I think that's how I would put it in, in two different buckets, Tim. Very interesting, very interesting. I think it's one of the, the common challenges that we see time and time again is it's just very difficult to make all the different pieces of the tech stack play together nicely. Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can, and to your idea, a common framework, a, a common foundation that allows these pieces to kind of get set up uh, uh, independently is, is very much needed for the industry at large uh, in many cases. Um, when you think about then uh, this kind of approach and the, kind of the role the vendors uh, play, um, how are you, if you, could you maybe provide some advice on how you engage with your vendors in terms of managing them and kind of working with them and collaborating with them? Yeah, and I, uh, I think from a technology per perspective, it starts with the why. Like, why are we doing the way we have built these systems? And uh, as I said, like most of these partners we work with are open and uh, probably to some extent very uh, relieved and thrilled that, hey, somebody is thinking in those lines, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, our goal is the same goal, right? To be able to have a piece of technology which is going to get implemented in a uh, restaurant and it's going to work for where team members and guests are going to love using it, right? So the goal is the same. Now, how do we do it is where uh, may, we may have differing opinions, but once we explain uh, why we have this common framework, why they have to adhere to certain standards if they have to interact with us or integrate with us, um, it's a much easier conversation, right? People, our partners do want to do that. Um, and uh, for example, if you think about, right, um, security on a API call, right? And the reason we need that is because we want to make sure that we are getting, uh, uh, or we have the appropriate controls that nobody is able to make a spurious call or a, a call which is not intended, right? Um, I don't think anybody is going to push back and say like, oh, no, 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 we should not look at that, right? Because if anybody is is aware of what is happening in the industry, what is happening in the cybersecurity space, this is something which is like in the forefront of everybody. You just have to yeah. be able to tell them that, hey, 
this this is the reason why we are doing it and all of them are open to that right so that's just an example but there are so many other examples where like if you explain the why is why you are doing it why is it important to you guys how is it going to change the guest uh, experience how is it going to change the uh, um, team member experience how how does it add to the stability of the restaurant we have we have seen a huge uh, success on um, aligning with our partners i haven't seen at least anybody who pushes back and says like hey we are not going to work with you because you have this framework uh, uh, which you want to stick to. Wow. And, and listening to you talk, I can easily imagine how Brinkers is probably smoothing the way for a lot of the smaller companies that may not have this kind of pull or influence over the vendors to be able to kind of take advantage of the work that you've done uh, and the structure that you've put in place. And so I can see a kind of a benefit, not just for yourselves, but for the industry at large. You mentioned cybersecurity, and I was wondering if you could maybe uh, speak a little bit more on that. It, it seems really uh, thinking about some of the headlines that have recently hit it just you know it's it's hard to th imagine how you know one bad attack could undo so much induce and so much damage to your business how are you thinking about cybersecurity and and what kind of guidance or advice could you put on, uh, provide on that yeah so having gone through a data incident and living lived through that um, it, it's it's on the forefront for me like if you ask me what keeps me up at night that exact thing is one thing which like uh keeps me up at night um but we have uh, we have been able to uh look at it from a perspective of like uh what we need to do to secure our four walls um and uh i would say um the systems which we have put in place the the processes which we have in, have put in place um uh, it has been helping us uh, tremendously in uh, like fortifying the walls which we have. W one thing which I would tell Tim, like on a cybersecurity space, and I'm, I'm trying not to overshare, but I'm uh, making sure that um, it's relevant. Uh, at the end of the day, we have to run our business, right? Um, if I make it so difficult for my business partners to uh, operate a restaurant, uh, then like our revenue is going to get impacted. So how do I look at how I'm implementing some of these processes within the four walls where it doesn't slow down my process, but also isolates the thing which are critical to me uh, or critical to the uh, security posture uh, and uh, trying to do it in a way where I can have a coexistence of both. And it's a, it's a challenge. Uh, it's, there is no easy way out of it. Uh, I have an amazing team which has been uh, helping uh, us think through that we have an amazing group of partners who have been uh helping us build those things um but at the end of the day when you look at cyber security and what you need to do um i would say partner with somebody who uh understands again has that kind of mindset understands what you're looking for and be honest with them at the end of the day you're in the business of running restaurants uh, or putting technology in the restaurants and you have to do that where guests don't feel uh, your systems are slow or you have put too many too much control that they are not able to uh, uh, interact with you or the convenience factor and all those things. And the same holds true for team members. You cannot ha give them something where it says like, hey, you have to go through five different authentication process before you can get in. Like at some point, they're going to say like, OK, I'm good with pen and paper. Right. So how do you strike that balance? <laughs> And and I can again tell you uh, from my experience is that there is a happy medium path uh, which is there. Um, you just have to be able to uh, explain that and uh, challenge your uh, partners to bring that to the table and think in that way as you're implementing it. No, oh, that's very helpful actually. So you're looking for that balance of where you can get enough cybersecurity to protect and defend your businesses uh, uh, from the attacks that are out there, but also balancing that with the need to be able to operate the uh, restaurants in a convenient and efficient manner for your employees and for your customers uh, too as well. Um, that, that actually yeah. reminds me of some of the, uh, when we think about technology and, and so much of the discussion right now in the restaurant industry is uh, around labor shortage and just the, the inability to get all the people 
that we need to, to run and operate the restaurants. And it seems like technology has a very natural play as it relates to automating and kind of making it easier to, to, to run the business, so to speak. Can you speak about how technology has been or how you're thinking about the automation element and using technology to kind of be able to do more with you know fewer people? Yeah, so there are a couple of uh, things which we are doing, but I think the mindset for us has been always there, right? Um, we know that uh, running a restaurant is uh, really difficult, right? Like if you think about all the different processes which are there, uh, what you need to do, and uh, and we want our operators, as I said, not to be uh, uh, tech support, but taking care of our guests and our team members, and that's the focus. So. So we have this mindset of just trying to look at everything and simplify. So I'll give you an example of, um, so I was working in a restaurant on a Friday evening. We had rolled out a system during COVID and uh, um, I I felt good about it. And I was like, okay, so I was in the restaurant. I said, like, let me manage that. Like, let me work on that same system. I would have lasted for like 15 minutes where I was like, oh my God, like this is like team members cannot do this. So. What that did is like I was eating my own dog food, but also gave me an opportunity to say like, okay, this system doesn't work. So why am I putting my team members in that situation, right? It's not simple. Um, it's difficult to use. Guests are not complaining and all those things. So, so we look at it from that lens. Like, can I go and run a restaurant to use the system I'm putting out there? Uh, and we came back and redid everything. Is it 100%? No, but is it? better than what we had absolutely so i think that's the kind of things which we we look at uh, whether it is doing a line check and trying to uh, automate as much as possible uh, trying to uh, uh, look at automation so that we don't have to have operators do the same task over and over again like all those things have been in the forefront what has been really important right now is that knowing the labor shortages, knowing the newness in the system, uh, it's becoming more and more critical for us to uh, like just focus, hype, be hyper focused on that, right? Like to be able to make sure that we are looking at simplification uh, to a degree which we haven't looked at, uh, and it's a it's a huge advantage for at least for a technologist like me to say that, hey, I've been telling, uh, or I've been talking about this for a long time. Now we are realizing that we have to do it. That's the only way out of this whole thing. So, and mm -hmm. and that's helping us in terms of pushing some of the things uh, on, uh, from a, from a uh, operator's perspective to technology solves um, so that they can, like it's simple for them to be able to do their work in the restaurant. We have implemented handhelds uh, in our restaurants where team members can take orders on the from the uh, from at the table itself, and it does help uh, us in terms of accuracy of orders, making sure like we have the best team members on the floor and things like that. Um, and those are again like things which is going to simplify operation operations uh, as we as we go through this. So so having that mindset of like hey anything I can non value add I can take it out. Like, I think that should be the goal. That, that is quite the litmus test, right? Uh, to, to eat your own dog food, to experience firsthand what your technology experience looks like uh, when you're in the restaurant and for the operators and for the employees themselves. Uh, Pankaj, thank you for this. Uh, one, I guess, maybe last question just to ask you is, when you look at retail or uh, the restaurant technology stack and kind of where it's going, how do you see it evolving uh, in the near term? Where are we headed uh, with technology uh, in the restaurant? Yeah, I think, um, and I'll give you my perspective. I don't know if uh, uh, like the change curve for uh, other players, other partners, uh, and how they are going through this. But for us, it's uh, I should be able to have a system which is uh, self-healing, redundant, scalable, uh, driven uh, primarily by cloud uh, on, uh, and um, that's how it should work. Like today, if you look at the different systems I have in a restaurant, it's like probably uh, 100 different types of devices in my restaurant and uh, uh, they are not interoperable, right? So. If my kitchen display systems goes down, I cannot take an iPad and uh, put it in the kitchen display system uh, just because of the uh, kind of structure I have. 
So I think where we are looking at is like, how do we reduce the footprint uh, of technology, still be able to do more with less, right? Like I still want to mm. make sure that operations uh, in the restaurants are driven by technology, but I don't have to have that many disparate system. Uh, how do I scale up and down, right? If a Friday night, uh, Friday night rush hits, I don't have to say like, hey, now I have to uh, do some, something different. The system should know that there is a Friday night rush and uh, ramp up or down. You would have limitations from a kitchen capacity perspective, but at least technology doesn't become the bottleneck on that. And then the last thing is that it has to be stable and scalable, right? Uh, nobody has to go through any training material when they are using an iPhone or a device like that. Like, why do I have to have somebody learn a new system every time I have to deploy something? It should be much more intuitive, much more scalable, stable. Uh, and uh, and I think that's where we are heading. Uh, it's a journey for us. Um, I would say like we have started some elements of that, but I think we have a long way to go. Uh, but um, I feel pretty bullish and positive that um, if we stay in the path we are in and continue uh, on what we are doing, we should be able to get there one day. That's a great insight, actually. The evolution of the restaurant technology stack is not going to be more complicated. It's going to be simpler. And actually, in that simplicity, is actually going to be uh, much harder to achieve. It's easy to get things very complicated. It's much more difficult to make things simple. You know, if you were to start off your career or maybe have a chance to speak to those who are just getting started in restaurant technology, uh, any advice for how they could better prepare uh, for a career in restaurant technology? Yeah, I think if it's a leader, I would say like uh, understand the business before you understand technology. Um, if you are mm -hmm. able to crack that code and uh, uh, establish with your business partners uh, that you are trying to work with them to solve a common goal, uh, you will be able to put a technology solution uh, easily into that. And I, I and I'm not trying to undermine the importance of technology and the understanding and all those things. Uh, but as I always do, like there is a business reason why uh, I'm trying to implement a technology solution. Uh, and if I'm able to understand that business reason, 99% uh, of the time I should be able to hit the mark with a technology solve. But if I start mm -hmm. with a technology solve and try to fit it in, it'll be like me working in that restaurant on that Friday night, trying to use my own system and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and that's, again, as you said, that's my litmus test. Uh, can I, any of my team members go and work in a restaurant and uh, be able to use it? And if they are able to use it without any operational experience, I'm pretty sure like our operators will be able to use it. So I think just understanding the business and uh, being a advocate and uh, great partner for the business is going to go a long way as people uh, or leaders start uh, getting into uh, restaurant technology. Wow, thank you. Thank, Pankaj, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Everyone, I've been having the privilege to speak with Pankaj Padra of uh, Brinkers International, SVP and CIO.